Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update tonight, the 29th of January 2016. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by our major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Folks, the tr first tropical cyclone of the season has now been named Tropical Cyclone Stan. Tropical Cyclone Stan is located out here to the north of Port Hedland and is tracking in a south southeasterly direction. At the moment, the best guess scenario is that the system will make landfall around the De Grey River around about middle of the afternoon to latter parts of the afternoon tomorrow. Now that is a distinct deceleration in the system in comparison to what we were looking at 24 hours ago. We were looking at an early morning to mid morning impact. So there, therefore the system has a little bit more time over water and a little bit more chance to intensify further. And the Bureau of Meteorology now predicting a category three cyclone upon landfall as it encounters some very favorable atmospheric and environmental conditions. Now the other thing to note is the extension of the warning area a long way inland, so Marble Bar, Nullagine, uh, Newman even, looking at the possibility of seeing some gale force winds from this system because there are some complex atmospheric patterns or atmospheric processes in play in the middle and upper levels of the atmosphere that are going to mean that this system once it hits land is going to disintegrate or weaken a lot slower than what we would normally expect because it will no longer get its energy from the ocean but it will now get its energy from temperature differences in various levels of the atmosphere and so the fact that it won't be over an ocean is going to be much less of a factor for it in the medium term but let's deal with that tomorrow night because tonight i want to talk more about its landfall Looking at the system on the old Cyclone Chasers Weather Centre here, we can see the system is attached to a trough line to the south and it's also creating scattered to widespread showers and thunderstorms right across the western Kimberley, eastern Pilbara and even the central Pilbara. Uh, the western Pilbara missing out on a lot of this activity as it's just west of that trough line. The Cyclone itself, you can definitely see the central convection has intensified or increased over the past 12 to 18 hours. We can see that best on colour enhanced imagery and the colour enhanced imagery shows this grey colouring here which is showing us really high and cold cloud tops associated with very strong convection with the system. Now we would only expect those cloud tops and those, those thunderstorms to get stronger and stronger overnight as we enter what will be known or what we know as the diurnal maximum for convection over water. That means that it's the best time for tropical thunderstorms to grow strong overnight in or over the oceans. The Joint Typhoon Warning Centre also having the system moving in a south southeasterly direction all the way to landfall, almost like a straight line here. As we know, tropical cyclones don't travel in straight lines. There will be little wobbles along the way. Uh, but it gets very, very close to Port Hedland, around about 20-odd uh, 20 no 20 nautical miles away. So you're looking at around about a 40 to 50 kilometre uh, proximity to Port Hedland and as we know with tropical cyclones being inside that 30 kilometre range from the centre of the system is very very important if you're outside of that, that 30 to 40 kilometre range you tend to get only gale force to destructive or damaging winds uh, if you get into that if within that 30 kilometre zone then you're going to see those really destructive winds so it's um it's very, very close at the moment. Look, I don't think this is going to go anywhere near Caratha anymore. So Caratha residents, you can breathe a sigh of relief. Uh, this is certainly one for Port Hedland. Now, whether it goes to the west or to the east of Port Hedland is very important, particularly when talking about storm surge. Uh, if it's to the west of Port Hedland, then we're going to see winds coming in off the ocean, driving that ocean up. If it's going to move to the east of Port Hedland, then we're going to see winds off the land, so the ocean won't have a chance to drive up onto the land until after the system passes. And then after the system passes, we might see uh, the potential for a slightly higher than normal tide. But for the moment, at least, the threat is too close to call when it comes to storm surge because the error margins are so fine. The key thing to look at here is wind shear and you can see where the eye is, that's the system or rather it used to lie where the eye was, it now lies where this little red circle is. Now the system is currently undergoing moderate levels of vertical shear. It's going to, the shear is going to decrease as the system approaches land. So you can see here it drops below 20 knots. 20 knots is around about the magical mark. Above that, 
tropical cyclones tend to struggle to intensify below that they tend to thrive and so that 20 knot mark is around about the magic marker when it comes to cyclone intensity forecasting and you can see here it passes below the magic marker on its approach to the Pilbara coastline and so we would see we would expect to see some fairly rapid intensification here in this section this last 12 hours or so before landfall the key component of the latest tropical cyclone advice from the Bureau is that they have now included this area of very destructive winds with gusts to 170 kilometres per hour possible near the cyclone centre as it makes landfall Saturday afternoon or evening that so far has not been the case so this is a very new and it's only in the last update or rather last two updates that we've seen that so we have got yellow alerts out for a lot of places and not only just on the coast, we're also looking at places inland as well on those yellow alerts. And probably by the next update, maybe even by the time you're reading this or watching this, I should say, uh, you might have already gone to red alert. Alrighty, let's take a look at some of the computer model ensemble guidance here. Now, the computer models have been terrible at intensity forecasts, but they have been very, very good at direction and track forecasts. So, uh, we're going to stick with them on the direction and track side of things. We're probably going to discount them for the intensity side of things. Now, we can see that the outlying system here has, uh, the outlying version of the UK MET model has the system crossing around Port Hedland. The outlying eastward most the eastward most outlier has it crossing around Wallal. The Canadian CMC2 is uh, pretty adamant on this just east of Port Hedland crossing. However, once again, we have outliers of the CMC tracking it even west of Port Hedland there, uh, and once again, almost as far east as Bidyadanga. So there is still a fair error margin there on the CMC. But look, in general, the CMC is not considered one of the more accurate global computer models when it comes to cyclone forecasting. That's why we tend to get such widespread and occasionally crazy uh, crazy outliers. One, one time uh, I remember a cyclone this close to land and the CMC had it moving out here to the west. So it does, it does pose some crazy solutions. But you can see very similar to the UK Met if, if slightly more spread out. The gold standard in computer model forecasting for tropical cyclones is the European Ensemble. And the European Ensemble overall has it crossing right over the top of the Degray River catchment or the Degray River mouth uh, and then pushing in a south southeasterly direction. But once again, you see there's so a couple of crazy outliers out here towards Wim Creek and another, another couple of crazy outliers to the south here of Bidyadanga around that Wallal region. So there is still a fair error margin. However, we can start to, to hone in on this zone here as being the most likely to see this cyclone crossing and at this stage Port Hedland seems to be around about the western edge of the mainstream model guidance. So what the system does over the next 24 hours in terms of wobbling around a little bit because uh, because tropical cyclones don't just move in a straight line in most cases they tend to just wobble around a bit and those little wobbles can make all the difference here especially when we're talking about Port Hedland be going into the very destructive core or remaining outside of that very destructive core those little wobbles can be huge and the other issue is that those little wobbles are impossible to forecast on computer models so yes we can give you a general direction which is going to be south southeast and there's very little doubt on that but along that direction there's going to be little wobbles either side of that south southeasterly heading the system once it makes landfall will accelerate and you can see each one of these color codes is for a 24 hour period so you can see the black is until 10 a.m tomorrow and then the red is until 10 a.m on Sunday and then the green is until 10 a.m. on Monday so you can see that it really does get a move on here between uh, Sunday and Monday you can see that green shading uh, extending a lot longer than say the black and to a lesser extent the red shading and then it continues on south southeast through through the southeastern parts of WA now look it probably won't be a cyclone here it would have transitioned into an extra tropical system but that doesn't mean it's still not going to give a, a fair amount of rainfall and strong winds in its vicinity 
The GFS Ensemble 2 is predicting that uh, crossing right over the top of the Grey River, uh, the Grey River area, and the outlying models predicting west of Port Hedland all the way out to Wallal. And once again, the mainstream models here are predicting about Port Hedland as far west as the system travels, and about as far east as Pardu. So it's uh, it's starting to get very tightly packed in here. The more likely track forecasts are these ones in here. The less likely track forecasts are these ones out here. I just want to highlight here about that fact that I was talking about the uh, intensification just before the system makes landfall. Now this is a clear, very clear example of what I'm talking about here. That the system here, you know, is reasonably intense, but you can see this purple shading just starting as the system approaches the coast, and bang, it it really explodes upon landfall. And this is what the bureau are talking about: this rapid intensification on approach to the coast as it goes through, as I showed you those wind shear charts, goes through that really low levels of shear, uh, and the system just bombs out as it makes landfall. So very, very dangerous situation there, especially if it does make landfall. Over over the top of Port Headland because things may get nasty very very quickly so it may be you know you, you may be getting 80 to 100 kilometer an hour winds and BAM it's just gonna hit very suddenly and believe it or not it may even hit you just after the system crosses the coast the worst of it any, anyway this might be able to highlight slightly better what I'm trying to say as we go to 5 a.m. tomorrow we can see that the system is generally tracking in a south southeasterly direction. As we move on to about 11 a.m. tomorrow, we can see the system beginning to intensify, shown by these darker shadings of colouring, which shows us 35 to 40. These are knots. These are sustained wind speeds. And you can see here Port Hedland, just on the western edge of that strong wind. As we go to 5 p.m. tomorrow evening, we can see that the system has made landfall, but it's actually just on the northern side here where we see that enhanced wind. So you can see here that we haven't been seeing too much in terms of bad winds here, but as soon as the system makes landfall is when we see these winds jump up to about 40 to 45 knots, and then a couple of hours even after landfall, look at this, we're getting 50 knot winds, sustained winds at 50 knots, punching all the way through from about Port, or just to the east of Port Hedland, all the way through to Pardu. And so it's actually not until the system crosses the coast that we see the worst of the conditions. And that's uh, certainly not normal. And not only that, but we actually see some of the heaviest rainfall once the system has either cr is crossing or has crossed the coast already. So you can see here Port Hedland receiving its heaviest rainfall after the system has made landfall. So this could be one of those systems where you might be on red alert uh, and, and you might need to stay on red alert for a little while after it actually crosses. So it won't, you won't be getting the all clear uh, as soon as the system has made landfall because as I say, it's expected to maintain some intensity and the worst of it is expected to be after or as it crosses the coast. Folks, if you are a subscriber, we're going to do a live Q&A session with me in about 15 minutes time after, you, after you've had a chance to watch this update. Uh, so what we're going to do is we, we, you're going to need to go into the pop-up chat room, click on that, type in your question and I will show you live uh, some answers or, or my best version of your answers. Some answers I may not be able to get for you, uh, but for what I can do, at least from the meteorological side of things, I will try and get you some answers to your questions. So if you're a subscriber, check that out as soon as you've had a look at this broadcast. I'll remain online for the live Q&A session until the session, until all the questions are answered. To become an Oz Cyclone Chasers subscriber, please go to ozcyclonechasers.com.au. There'll be a subscribe link just up here. Click on that and have a look at what you get as a subscriber. And thank you for your generous support. That's all I've got for you tonight. Stay safe overnight. I'll have another update for you probably around about landfall time tomorrow. I'll try and bring it up a little bit earlier as the system's making landfall or just before. Subscribers will have an update for you in the morning, along with another live Q&A session.